The basketball world is still reeling after yesterday's uh, explosive testimony from the father of former UofL basketball recruit Brian Bowen. Brian Bowen Sr. revealing in court in New York that then UofL assistant coach Kenny Johnson handed him a secret cash payment of $1,300 in a car sitting outside the Gold House Hotel in Louisville. He also said sports agent Christian Dawkins told him it was for the cost of the Bowen family living in an extended stay suite at the Louisville Gold House. Prosecutors say Bowen's son ended up signing with Louisville after a deal was struck to pay the family $100, $100,000. $100, okay, I'll yeah. get my numbers right here. Bowen Sr. cut a deal to testify in exchange for immunity as the government hopes to convict Dawkins and two former Adidas executives of bribery and fraud charges related to the FBI's pay-to-play investigation. Top U of L leaders say they had no idea any payments were made. Got to get all these figures right. I've seen a lot of them. <laughs> Could that testimony mean Louisville basketball was a repeat violator of major rules? Well, the question's coming out because at the time they were already in trouble because of the stripper scandal. The potential for the death penalty has now been mentioned. Radio talk show host and former U of L star Jerry Eves is joining us now. Uh, you were the canary in the coal mine talking about death penalty months and months and months ago. You started talking about this on your radio show and yes. to us privately. Yes. You've taken a lot of heat for it, but now yes. it's coming back to fruition. Why, what do you think will happen? Uh, it's a difficult situation right now for the University of Louisville because they're getting blindsided by things that they had no idea was going on. That's the first thing. I'm, not, I'm saying the new staff, Chris Mack, Vince Tyre. They're just walking into a hurricane right now. They just have to continue to work and do their due diligence. But the university is in serious trouble. There's no question about that. So what has been the most damning testimony you think so far about U of L in these latest proceedings? It's not so much uh, Brian Bowen Sr.'s testimony. It is the text messages that communicates back and forth with Kenny Johnson. And that's the frightening, damning piece. There's another piece. Jordan Fair was in the hotel room. The other coach. Communicating, exactly, the other assistant coach communicating. We must be careful because we're on probation. That's the second piece. The third piece is Coach Patino did text Kenny Johnson <laughs> stating, can you believe that DePaul is offering $200,000 to Brian Bowen? So there's been a lot of pieces out there that connects to where when the NCAA does look at it, it'll be very hard for Louisville to say so, people did not know. <coughs> Excuse me, as this plays out in New York, have we heard, heard the worst when it comes to UofL, or do we expect more bombshells? That's hard to say. You have to understand the government's case was supposedly trying to say Louisville was the victim, but I don't think they accomplished that very well. Uh, the defense case is saying that this is rampant through all assistant coaches, and I really feel for the assistant coaches. I really do, because they're put in a situation to play a game that is really unfair. It really is. And if you look at both of the young men's resume, I said it on my show for numerous times. It is not a slap. It's a fact. Kenny Johnson's resume did not say associate head coach at the University of Louisville. That's just a fact. He doesn't have the experience to handle what he was put into, dealing with a parent in an unusual situation. That takes a mature person. That's the problem with college athletics. Well, and a lot trying to please and get these recruits, too. So my bigger question is, we've seen certain schools mentioned, and I'm wondering, you know, what about Nike schools and that? Is it going to get bigger, do you think, in scope? Without a doubt, it's going to get larger. It's just the beginning. This is the first three. You've got Christian Dawkins, of course, the major player. You've got James Gatto, who was the Adidas rep that was supposedly funneling the money and Merle Code, who was the finance guy. And it's going to get deeper. You still have the assistant coaches trials that will start February and March of next year. Chuck Person, Evans from Oklahoma State. There are other trials to come to where we're going to hear more information and more damning information, not toward Louisville. This is not about Louisville, but they're in the middle of the hurricane. That's all. Back to death penalty. Okay, look at the changes U of L we've seen happen. Governor gets rid of the board, puts a brand new board in. Your president is gone. Your coach is the athletic director, the famed athletic director. Uh, wouldn't the NCAA say, hey, you really did a good job of cleaning house there? Don't hurt the new people. No. I, mean, <laughs> I, it, I would love to say that was true, but everything you said doesn't mean anything. They really? damaged the university. It's not about the individuals. The university is supposed to govern itself. The university is part of the NCAA. So when we say the NCAA, you're speaking about yourself. So you can't do that. You have to look at it the way it is. The university and all the employees have to govern itself better than it has Oh, golly, at Louisville, probably the last seven or eight years. It makes it very difficult on all the new people. Chris Mack and his staff working extremely hard. Vincent Tyre trying to do Keep your head up. the yeah. best due diligence, but that means nothing. They're going to harm the school, and that is what the presidents 
athletic directors and head coaches have voted on. So when we say that, you'll see people say it's unfair, but it's not. It's the only way that you can get a school to understand the severity of the issues. All we right. will see what happens. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it as always. And you can hear Jerry every day on Talk 1080 at noon. He has an interesting talk show. I listen to it on my way into work. <laughs> you, you've got a lot to talk about. You have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes, you do. Panama City and